for tuning in to another episode of The Monkey Boy Presents, the DC Comics Superhero Collection by Eagle Moss, and today I'm happy to bring you the 99th issue in the collection, Superboy. And this, as you can tell from the cover and the figure here, is the most modern incarnation of Superboy, Connor Kent, also known as Connell. He took Superman's Kryptonian name, Kal-El Connell. Get it? Ah. Uh, for those of you who know the character, you probably know that he's been around for a very, very long time. Well, the idea of Superboy has. This magazine only covers Connor Kent. It doesn't really cover the original Superboy, who was simply Superman when he was a teenager. The comic came out in the 1940s, and it was a pretty big hit. It lasted for quite a while, and then they decided to reboot the DC Universe, and they retconned Superman, so that never really happened. Um, if you know Superboy, chances are, if you don't know him from the comic books, you might know him from a very old appearance on a 1960s television pilot that never went anywhere. Uh, he later appeared in an animated series called The Adventures of Superboy that was in the late 1960s. He also appeared in episodes of The Super Friends. In the late 1980s, there was a short-lived television series called Superboy that was from the same production company that did the Christopher Reeves movies from the theaters, and there were actually two different actors to portray the character over the course of the series. Later on, he was the star of a television series called Superboy and the Legion of Superheroes, which was changed to Superman and the Legion of Superheroes because of all sorts of legalities regarding who owned Superboy, so they had to change the name at the last minute, but the show was still very good, and most recently has appeared on the recently canceled Cartoon Network animated series Young Justice. For those of you who are unaware of Connor Kent, the most recent Superboy, well, that is why, of course, we have the magazine, which we'll take a look at first, and it'll tell you everything you need to know about the clone of Superman. And then, we'll take a look at the figure itself, covering the good, the bad, and the ugly. A really interesting character, unique origin for sure, and I think a very nice figure. I hope you sit back, relax, and enjoy. Issue number 99 of the DC Comics Superhero Collection by Eagle Moss, Superboy. First up, the character section. we learn that this Superboy was created in a test tube at Cadmus Labs after Superman was seemingly killed by the villain known as Doomsday. He was cloned using a sample of Superman's DNA combined with a human volunteer's DNA and was artificially aged to be 15 years old. He eventually broke free of the tube that housed him with help from a group of teenage boys who were also clone test subjects known as the Newsboy Legion. Determined to live this new life to its fullest, the cloned teenage Superman ditched his cape in favor of a leather jacket that was given to him by one of the Newsboy Legion and swore to once again become Metropolis's protector. Superboy also teamed up with fellow Superman fill-in Steel to protect Metropolis from the villainous cyborg Superman and the alien warlord Mongol when they tried to decimate the city. talk a little bit about some of the villains he's faced, including the Silver Sword and an evil clone version of himself called Match, who is created by the terrorist organization known simply as the Agenda. After winning his battle with Match, 
Superboy learned that the agenda had infected him with a virus that was slowly breaking him down on the cellular level. His girlfriend Tana never left his side while Project Cadmus worked day and night to find a cure, which they eventually did, but there was a side effect. The newly named con went on to join with other teenage superheroes in the DCU to form the team Young Justice. Young Justice even teamed up with the Teen Titans once to take down agents of the Agenda. Unfortunately, Tana, Superboy's girlfriend, was killed by one of the Agenda's agents. After this traumatic event, Superman sent Superboy to live with his parents, Jonathan and Martha, on their farm in Smallville. The last couple pages bring us up to speed with Superboy, at least at the time of this publication. Superboy eventually learned that the human who donated DNA to Project Cadmus was Lex Luthor. Unbeknownst to Superboy, Luthor had put a chip inside of his head and took control of the teenage powerhouse. Superboy's girlfriend, the current Wonder Girl Cassie Sandsmark, eventually stopped him and saved him by tying him up with her magic lasso. With a new sense of self, Superboy rededicated himself to becoming the best hero he could be. He also went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the evil Superboy Prime during the event known as the Infinite Crisis, and helped to stop the psychotic superpowered team from activating a weapon that would have altered the entire cosmos, but sacrificed his own life in the process. Connor was soon resurrected by members of the Legion of Superheroes in the 31st century so that he could help fight alongside them against the villainous Time Trapper and, once again, Superboy Prime. After this, he returned to Earth where he rekindled his relationship with Wonder Girl, Cassie Sandsmark. Superboy also received a reboot when The Flash accidentally reset the DCU, altering the universe slightly. In this new altered reality, Superboy was created by a group known as Nowhere to take down a team of superpowered teenagers known as the Teen Titans. Next, we look at a couple of Superboy's classic stories. First up, The Return of Superman. This story, which is also known as The Reign of the Superman, takes place after Superman has apparently been killed by the evil Doomsday. Four imposter Superman come in to take his place, including the cloned Superboy. Over the course of the story, his powers develop, as does his own unique personality. It concludes with an epic battle where the clone Superboy teams up with the new hero Steel and the newly rejuvenated and seemingly returned from the dead Superman. This is basically Superboy's origin story. It's beautifully illustrated, wonderfully written, and if you want to know where he came from, this is the story to check out. We also take a look at Infinite Crisis. And this was the story that DC used to reboot the multiverse. It featured a huge cast of characters and crossed over into multiple titles, but it did feature Superboy quite prominently. In Superboy's story arc, we find him being confronted by the now evil Superboy Prime who feels that this Earth's Superboy Connor is unworthy of the name, and they get into a huge brawl. Connor at one point calls in help from his friends on the Teen Titans and Young Justice who who do manage to stop the evil Superboy Prime from activating a weapon that may destroy all of reality, with Superboy making the ultimate sacrifice in the process. It's a really beautifully illustrated story, not one of my favorites in the DC, but if you want to see how powerful Superboy really is, this is a great story to check out. 
Connor's Friends and Foes section features his former girlfriend Tana Moon, his current girlfriend Cassie Sandsmark, also known as Wonder Girl, and the two men whose DNA was used to create the clone Superboy, his cousin Superman, and the evil Lex Luthor. Lastly, the iconography section takes a look at some of the evil clones in the DCU. It starts by taking a closer look at Natch, the evil clone version of Superboy. It also introduces us to a hero known as Manhunter, who was on a quest to hunt down and destroy evil cloned versions of himself. Adolf Hitler was also successfully cloned by a group of neo-Nazis who were led by the fascist dictator Baron Bedlam. The mutated monster known simply as Anomaly, an evil clone of Power Girl known simply as Divine, and finally we learn that even Lex Luthor is a clone after having his brain transplanted into a cloned body when his old body succumbed to the effects of kryptonite poisoning. Here we have Superboy, Connor Kent, the newest Superboy anyway, and I wasn't expecting much when I saw this figure was the next one in the series, but man, is this a fantastic figure. It's one of my favorites in the series. Uh, I'm not the biggest Superman fan in the world, I'm a Batman guy, but uh, I do appreciate the character for what he is, and I really like Superboy here. I think he's a great addition. I love the fact that they put him in this particular costume with the simple black t-shirt with that great Superman logo across the chest, the blue jeans with the belt, great detail on that buckle there too, and the jeans are awesome as well. I like the pose, how his one arm is up, almost like he might be getting ready to fly, and the details in the face are just really outstanding. He is a great looking figure, all the way down to his boots and the cuffs of the jeans. It's just, it's great. He's a really nice looking character. He's simple, but he's really well done. I wish all the figures in the series were as detailed and as nice looking as Connor here. Um, you know, he's not necessarily for everyone, but I think I think the majority of Superman fans really are going to like this guy and should definitely add him to their personal collections. I'll talk a little bit more about what I like about him and the minor nitpicks I have in just a moment. Superboy stands atop the classic DC logo, and the underside of the base features his name and serial number. And so you can compare, here he is next to the Man of Steel himself, Superman. Alongside the villainous Lex Luthor. With Steel and Cyborg Superman, the two other stars from the reign of the Superman comics in a group shot with the other members of the Teen Titans that have been released. And finally, a group shot with all of the other members of the Superman family that have been released so far. Superboy Connor Kent is a great addition to this line. I like the fact that they decided to go with the most modern incarnation of him so he doesn't look like Superman, because that's what the classic Superboy would have looked like. And I think that overall, there is way more good than bad. But we'll start with the good, of course. I really think the pose is great. I like the fact that he looks as though he's about to take off into flight. The paint is clean, the sculpt is nice, musculature, shadowing and shading, and I love the choice of costume and the fact that they decided to go with Connor Kent. You can see the boots that he wears are a nice glossy black. You can see all the wrinkles and detailing in it, the soles of the shoes. The jeans look great. They're nicely textured, lots of wrinkles and crinkles, and really wonderful definition all over him. You can see the musculature even though he is wearing jeans and they're not like skin tight spandex. His midsection is great. The belt is really nicely detailed with great metallic silver paint on the buckle. I like how the belt it has a leather sort of texture. The jeans are detailed all the way around as well. You can see all of his pockets. 
Again, lots of great details on the sculpt of this figure. His upper body, too, shows the musculature even though he is wearing a t-shirt, and it does look like a t-shirt. It's not hugging his body like a lot of the other superhero costumes do, especially on the back. You can see how it's stretching across his uh, musculature there. It's a really wonderful detail. His arms are good. They have closed fists, so it's easy to sculpt, but there is some really nice musculature in his forearms. The flesh tone is really great. You can even see the fingernails on his fingers. I like his scale, too. He looks much more like a Superboy than, say, Superboy Prime did. Uh, when I reviewed that figure, I said he was more like Superman Prime, and I still stand by that. Finally, the head sculpt, I think, is really nice. It's not quite perfect, but it is very well done. The flesh tone, again, is really well done. I like the smile on the face, nice blue eyes, the hair is a glossy black, and you can see the different strands of hair, there's great highlighting through it even though it is a solid black, and the expression on the face is really, really nice. It looks like Superboy to me, even though it's not exactly perfect. The bad. My nitpick out of the way first would be the Superman logo on the chest. It's awesome, it's flawless, it's great, I love it. But it is a decal, which sort of stinks, especially when you consider it would have been really easy, I think, to stencil this logo onto a solid black t-shirt. And the head sculpt, while it's not perfect, it is, I think, pretty nice for the most part, but his nose is the biggest problem. It's a little bit crooked, a little too big for this character's face, but again, from the right angle, it does look like Superboy. Way more so than Superboy Prime did. Lastly, the ugly. Really nothing to speak of. He is not bendable or breakable. He is a solid lead figure. Overall, Superboy, also known as Connor Kent or con -El, is a great addition to this line. I think he looks wonderful. I think the pose and the expression on the face capture the character perfectly. It's really neat to have him alongside of his clone, Superman, and his clone Lex Luthor, depending on who you want to pose him with, it's neat to be able to switch him back and forth if you want to. And he just is a nice addition. If you know the character and you like the character, even the new 52 incarnation with that weird sort of red and black glowing suit, you should pick him up and add him to your personal collection. Especially if you're a fan of the death and rebirth of Superman and the whole reign of the Superman. Having him with Steel and Cyborg Superman is great, even though we are missing Eradicator. It's also wonderful to have another member of the Superman family. Since Batman's is so big, it's cool to continue to add figures to Superman and this will continue to grow. It's also great to have another member of the Teen Titans or Young Justice, I guess. It depends on what you want to call them. And they still have a few more members yet to come. He's not necessarily for everyone, but as I said, if you know him, you love him from the cartoon shows or from the Superman comics, add Connor here to your collection because I really am impressed with him. And I hope you've been impressed with my review of issue number 99 in the DC Comics Superhero Collection, Superboy. Please stay tuned for a big issue, number 100. I wish it was a slightly bigger character than the one we're getting. It's another member of the Teen Titans, a former member of Ter Deathstroke the Terminator's evil version of the Teen Titans who saw the light and decided to become a heroine. It's also a female, which is great. So stay tuned for that quick teaser. As always, I'm your host, the Monkey Boy, aka Jado is Friends. Thank you for watching.